everyone! In this video tutorial, I'd like to take a look at an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction, specifically the sulfonation of a benzene. So if we take a look here, we have our aromatic compound, which is benzene, and we know that aromatic compounds are particularly stable. So whenever we're doing these kinds of reactions, we need to make sure that we've got a really great electrophile that would actually stimulate the benzene to come and participate in the reaction. So in this case here, we have sulfuric acid, which is not a great electrophile, but what we'll see is if you have a really concentrated solution, you can have two sulfuric acids react with one another to generate the necessary electrophile in order to sulfonate our benzene ring. So let's take a look at the mechanism for this. Remember that for all of these electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions, the first step is to create an electrophile that is strong enough in its electrophilic character that it can motivate the benzene to engage in this reaction. Because ultimately in these reactions, the benzene is going to have to break aromaticity in order to actually add on the new compound. So in this case here, in order to generate our electrophile, we're going to be taking it from the case of having a concentrated sulfuric acid solution. You could also use fuming sulfuric acid, but we're just going to consider it from this concentrated solution format. In that case, you're going to have two sulfuric acids that react with one another. Now it can be a little confusing because we call sulfuric acid an acid, which means that it's typically going to be a proton donator. But in this case here, we create a circumstance where it's so concentrated that we actually see alternate behavior. In this case here, right, this is going to behave like a Bronsted-Lowry base. It's going to come and accept a proton. In this case here, it would act as we would expect an acid where it's going to be able to donate a proton off. So over here, the oxygen with its electrons attacks that hydrogen. Hydrogen can only have one bond, so this bond here is going to break, and those electrons are going to dump on this oxygen. So from this, we're going to wind up getting HSO4 minus, and then from this here, we wind up with a protonated sulfuric acid. Now this is great because what we've done is created an excellent leaving group. Remember that oxygen is highly electronegative, so this one here would be willing to take those electrons with it and essentially form water. And then here what we form is our SO3H, which is the electrophile. Now keep in mind that every step of this reaction is reversible, so you'll find that desulfonation is also a mechanism, and there's a video for that. So let's go take a look at the second step. Okay, so now that we've generated our electrophile, we're ready to take a look at the electrophilic aromatic substitution step. So remember that we have an electrophilic aromatic substitution is where a hydrogen will be substituted out for whatever the electrophile is. So here we have our benzene and its pi cloud electrons are going to come and attack this electrophile that we have made on the sulfur which has that positive charge sitting on it. So when it does that, this is going to be a reversible step because the benzene breaks aromaticity, which is not a particularly favorable thing to do. Now what you'll have though is something in solution that's able to behave like a base, and that's going to come and deprotonate this carbon right here. And then those electrons from that carbon-hydrogen bond will collapse and form into a pi cloud electron. And essentially we're going to re-establish aromaticity, which is why we're showing a one-way arrow, because this is a highly favorable step to accomplish. So these are the basic things that you need to know about the mechanism of the sulfonation of benzene. 